Hello everybody, we now start with the new chapter in physics for standard 9th ICSC and that's the fourth chapter as per concise that is pressure influence and atmospheric pressure. This chapter is divided into two parts. One first part is about pressure influence. So initially we'll be discussing about the pressure and then what is the difference between the pressure in normally <coughs> and uh, no, in fluids. That's the difference. And then we will have the next chap next part of the chapter that is atmospheric pressure. So firstly, uh, we know very well, we have been studying this thing as pressure it is nothing but pressure is equals to thrust upon area <clears throat> and what is thrust? thrust? Thrust is nothing but thrust is the force which is perpendicular okay force acting normally or force acting perpendicular so it is force acting perpendicular to surface so the force which is perpendicular to the surface is called as thrust and the pressure is thrust upon area. We very well know that when we talk about pressure we know that the thrust if it is more then the pressure is more means like for example when I am standing over here the complete weight of my body is acting on the ground so that particular weight if it is more then the pressure applied is more. If it is less, then the pressure applied is less. The next thing, it is inversely proportional to the area. That is area of the contact between the two. Like for example, if I am taking this thing and placing my hand like this and pressure applying a force, then the area which is in contact with the surface is this much. Now, the moment I paint it like this, then it will be the pressure applied will be less because the contact area is more. Now, if it is like this, then contact area is less, so pressure is more. And if it is like this, then the contact area is very less, so the pressure will be very high. So, you can see that the pressure is directly related to thrust, that is more the thrust, more the pressure. And inversely related to the area, that is more the area, lesser the pressure. Lesser the area, more the pressure. So, we see the thrust a force can be applied on a surface in any direction. If a force is applied in a direction normal or perpendicular to the surface, it is called as the thrust. So that's, we, that's what we define thrust as, that thrust is the force acting normally or perpendicular to the surface. So hence we define for thrust as thrust is a force acting normally on a surface. So, so the thrust is a force acting normally on a surface. <clears throat> the thrust exerted by a body placed on a surface is equal to its weight. Okay, so the thrust applied on a body by a body is equal to the thrust applied is equal to the weight of the body. Okay, so we know that the force applied will be equal to the weight of the body. The thrust is same in whatsoever position of the body is placed on the surface thus 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 exerted on a body on a surface is equal to weight of the body so it doesn't matter when i pay, when i'm seeing that what is the thrust applied by this particular duster on my hand it doesn't matter when i am putting it over here like this or i am putting it like this or i am putting it like this in any case the thrust which is applied by this duster on my hand is going to be the same because the thrust is equal to the weight of the duster. Now the weight of the duster is not going to depend upon whether I put it this way or I better put it this way or put it this way or this way. It is not going to depend on that. It is just a physical quantity which is irrespective of the position in which it is kept. The weight of this body is going to remain constant. So that's why the thrust which is there is going to remain constant for a body and that is equal to so we say that thrust is equal to the weight of the body so the weight of the body is the thrust the weight of the body is the thrust and the thrust is a vector quantity see thrust is force and force is a vector quantity why the vector quantity because vector quantity are those we need direction here thrust is only perpendicular 
so that's why it needs direction hence thrust is a vector quantity thrust is not a scalar quantity it's a vector quantity because direction is very important in case of thrust if the thrust is acting it has to be perpendicular and if it is perpendicular it means the direction is important so that means thrust is a vector quantity <coughs> now the unit of thrust of course whatever is the unit of force is a unit of thrust so force is measured in newton or kgf therefore thrust is also measured in newton so it is measured in the units of force the si unit of thrust is newton and cgs unit is dyne where 1 newton is equal to 10 raised to 5 dyne okay so the, we see the si unit so si unit is newton for si unit and the dyne in case of cgs units and 1 newton is equal to 10 raised to 5 dyne this is the relationship between the SI unit and the CGS system of this particular so the gravitational unit of thrust in MKS is KGF so now if I do not consider the gravitational force and I consider the weight without a gravitational force then I will measure it not in Newton but I will write it in KGF okay so then the thrust will be measured in KGF and in, in the CGS system it will be GF and it will be GF in the CGS system so the MKS system it is KGF and CGS system is GF and they are related as 1 KGF is equal to 9.8 Newton okay 1 KGF is equal to 9.8 Newton and 1 GF is equal to 989 okay so the relationship between the kgf and newton is that 1 kgf is equal to 9.8 newton and 1 gf is equal to 980 dyne so this was about the thrust so understood properly what is thrust thrust is a perpendicular so thrust is a force acting perpendicular surface it is equal to the weight of the body si unit is newton and dyne in cgs unit 1 newton is equal to 5 dyne in MKS system, if we are not taking gravitation force into, into picture, or we can say the gravitational unit of a thrust is KGF, where 1 KGF is equal to 9.8 Newton and 1 GF is equal to 980 dyne. This was about the thrust. Now we talk about pressure. The effect of thrust depends on the area of surface on which it acts. Well, it's very important that. The thrust is going to be now when I know this duster is going to have a particular weight it will depend upon how I am placing this duster that the pressure is going to be applied on the body okay so if I am placing the duster like this then the surface area in contact is very big so that's why the pressure will be less but if I place it like this then the area is slightly smaller than this so the pressure will be slightly higher but if I place it on this edge like this, then definitely the pressure is going to be the highest because the surface area in contact is the least. So we see over here that the effect of thrust depends on the area of the surface on which it acts. The effect of thrust is less on a larger area and while it is more on a smaller area. So if the thrust is, if the, uh, for the same thrust, if the cross section area that is the area of the contact is more then the pressure is less and if the if the pressure if the uh, contact area is less then the pressure is more for example if you stand on loose sand your feet sink in the sand but if you lie on that sand your body does not sink in the sand in both the cases the thrust exerted on the sand is same equal to your weight but when you lie on the sand, the thrust acts on a larger surface and when you stand, the same thrust acts on a smaller surface area. So this is very simple. You go to Jew Beach. When you go to the Jew Beach and when you are standing over there, you will find that when you stand or when you try to walk at that time, your feet are getting are sinking inside the sand a bit. Okay, up there there is a side of a sinking inside the sand. But when you lie down on the sand, do, do you tend to get sink? No, you don't get, get tend to sink. Why? Because when you are standing, your complete body weight 
which is the thrust is acting upon your feet so the suppose these are feet then it is acting only on your feet area so only this much area is in contact between the sand and you that's why the complete thrust is acting only on this much area now the moment you are sleeping that means you are lying down so the complete area is the complete body which is coming in contact with the sand so automatically the surface area has increased a lot so more the surface area lesser the pressure hence the sinking will be less another exa easy example i can give you is like for example you and so uh, a boy and a girl goes to the jew beach now they had gone to a party and then from that party they are going to the jew beach so the boy was wearing a flat shoes so shoes with a flat sole and the girl was wearing a pencil heel boy was weighing 50 kg but the girl was weighing only 30 kg but still while walking the girl's sandals used to sink inside the sand whereas the boys was able to walk very easily why is it so because when you are talking about the boy walking he is walking with his complete sole on the land so the complete 50 kg of weight is distributed in the complete surface whereas the girl is wearing a pencil heel so the heel being pointed they are going to exert more pressure and hence these heels her heels are going to sink inside the sand so that's how you can see even if the thrust was less okay the girl was weighing only 30 kg as compared to 50 kg of the boy still the girl was having difficulty in walking because her heels were getting sink inside the so in the inside the sand because of the very less area of contact between the heels and the body uh, on the sand so yeah that's what an example you can give you for more the area lesser the pressure and lesser the area pencil heel very less area hence more the force, more the pressure the effect of thrust is expressed in terms of thrust per area so basically what is pressure that is thrust per area so the effect of thrust is expressed as pressure which is thrust per area and the quantity is called as pressure thus pressure is the thrust per unit area of surface Okay. We can define pressure as the thrust per unit area of surface. So thrust per unit area of surface is pressure. Hence we can see that pressure is equals to thrust upon area or we can also call it in the form of formula as F upon A. So thrust pressure is equals to F upon A. Now over here the pressure is not going to be in any direction and hence the pressure is a scalar quantity okay pressure is a scalar quantity because the direction in which it is, there is no need for the direction in which the pressure is exerting pressure is only always going to be the same in one form only so that's why pressure is a scalar quantity pressure is scalar quantity and uh, the units of pressure is of course now we can see that pressure was force upon area so pressure is force force is measured in newton and area is in meter square so pressure is measured in newton per meter square which is given a no new name and that is pascal pascal is the name of a scientist hence it is small p and in case of symbol it will be capital p and a so Pascal is the unit of pressure in SI unit. The SI unit of pressure is Pascal which is equal to, so we can say 1 Pascal is equal to 1 Newton per meter square. Okay, 1 Pascal is equal to 1 Newton per meter square. So we see the SI unit of thrust is Newton and that of area is meter square. So the SI unit of pressure is Newton per meter square which is simple, abbreviated as Newton per meter square. This unit is named Pascal, symbol PA, after the name of the French scientist Blaise Pascal. 1 Pascal is equal to 1 Newton upon 1 meter square, or 1 Pascal is equal to 1 Newton meter square. Thus, we can define 1 Pascal. So, how do you define 1 Pascal? 1 Pascal is the pressure, okay? 1 Pascal is the pressure exerted on a surface of 1 meter square by a force of 1 newton acting normally on it so 1 pascal is the pressure 
exerted on an area of one meter square by whom? By a force, that is by a thrust or by a force of one newton acting. Because we are talking about force, so we have to show the direction of the force that is normally. So one, uh, one newton acting normally on it, acting perpendicular or acting per normally on it. So this is the definition of one pascal. However, if thrust is measured in kgf, an area in meter square, the pressure will be kgf meter square. So if I am using this, this particular formula, then of course then Pascal will, it will not be Pascal, then pressure will be equal to kgf per meter square or kgf per centimeter square or gf per centimeter square. Yeah, it could be any of these things because it will depend upon what is the units taken for the area and unit will taken for the force. The CGA unit of pressure will be time per centimeter square or Newton that is equal to 0 0.1 Newton per meter square or 1 Newton per meter square is equal to 10 time per centimeter square. So the relationship is 1 Newton per meter square is equal to 0 per 10 dyne per centimeter square. Okay. One newton per meter square is ten dyne per centimeter square. So, if the thrust is measured in gf, an area in centimeter square, the unit of pressure will be gf centimeter square. Other units of pressure are bar and millibar, where one bar is equal to ten minus to five newton per meter square, and one millibar is equal to ten to minus three bar and ten is to two. Uh, newton per meter square. So bar and millibars are normally used in case of atmosphere. So when we are talking about the atmospheric pressure, then we will call it as bars and if, if it is not bar and millibar. So that will be normally for the atmospheric conditions. Now apart from that, the at in, in atmosphere, we also measure the pressure by means of mercury barometer now because we use the mercury barometer that's why we consider the mercury column the height of the mercury column also as the pressure so the atmospheric pressure is generally expressed in terms of height of mercury column in the barometer a normal temperature at normal temperature the pressure and pressure the barometric height is 0 0.76 meters of hg or 76 centimeters of hg or 760 mm of hg hg is mercury so either it is 76 centimeters that is equal to 70, 760 mm or 0 0.76 meters is the height of the mercury column under normal temperature and pressure conditions so uh, at sea level which is taken as one atmosphere. So we take the atmospheric pressure as one atmospheric pressure is equal to 760 mm of Hg or we can say 76 centimeters of Hg or 0 0.76 mm uh, meters of Hg. Thus the atmospheric pressure is always expressed in unit of atmosphere the ATM where one at the ATM is equal to 0 0.76 meters of Hg is equal to 1.013 into 10 raised to 5 Pascal. So this is the important part that is 1 atmosphere is equal to 1.013 into 10 raised to 5 Pascal. This is 1 atmospheric pressure. 1 atmospheric pressure is 1.013 into 10 raised to 5 Pascal. Okay, That's a huge amount. So that's the amount of Pascal or that is the amount of atmospheric pressure. Sometimes we use TOR as unit of atmospheric pressure as the after the name of the scientist Torricelli where 1 TOR is equal to 1 mm of Hg that is 1 atmosphere is equal to 760 TOR okay. but very rarely used but yes you should know this thing that 1 TOR is equal to 760 uh, sorry 1 uh, atmosphere is equal to 760 TOR because 1 TOR is equal to 1 mm of Hg okay. so jitna mm of Hg utna hi, m, utna hi TOR now we see the factors affecting the pressure which we already discussed that one was the thrust that more the thrust or more the weight of the body more the pressure and secondly was the area of cross section more the area lesser the pressure lesser the area more the pressure. The pressure uh, the, the pressure exerted on a surface depends on two factors first the area on which the thrust is applied and second the thrust. For example, a brick if weight 4 kgf 
having dimensions 20 cm by 10 cm by 5 cm exerts maximum pressure on ground when it is placed with its longest side that is 20 cm vertical while it exerts minimum pressure on the ground when it is placed with the shortest side 5 mm vertical even though the thrust is same in each case exactly told you about instead of taking the uh, brick I took the example of this duster so I told you that if I want to have the maximum amount of pressure exerted by the duster because the weight is the same because the thrust is the same so I should place it like this when I place it like this then the amount of pressure exerted will be maximum because the area in contact is the minimum if I want the least pressure then I should place it like this then the area of contact is maximum so that's why the pressure will be minimum so that's what they took about the brick also so if I take the brick and I take the brick in such a way that the broader blood the broad base is placed on like this then definitely the pressure exerted will be less but if I place it vertically like this okay then definitely it is going to give you more pressure they already explained you in the form of a, a diagram also the first diagram the longest side vertical it gives you more pressure whereas the shortest side vertical is giving you lesser pressure so we see over here that from the figure we have area of the base is 5 into 10 in the first case so that's why 50 centimeter square so according to the pressure will be 4 kgf upon 50 centimeter square is equals to 0 0.08 kgf centimeter square where the same thing if it is placed in the base such that the, the broader base that is 20 into, 2, 20 into 10 is 200 centimeter square then the pressure will be 4 upon, 0 point, uh, 4 upon 200 that will be 0 0.02 kgf per centimeter square so you can see the same brick can give you a pressure of 0 0.08 also and 0 0.02 also because if I place it with a broader base then the pressure will be less if I put it at a shorter base then the pressure will be higher thus pressure on the ground in figure B is one fourth of the pressure in figure A obviously larger the area on which a given thrust x lesser is the pressure exerted by it secondly in figure 4.1b if another identical brick is placed over the first brick the thrust gets doubled that is if it is 4 kgf ke badle aur ek brick dal diya to 8 kgf ho jayega so if i increase the mass automatic or increase the uh, thrust automatically the force increases so that's why the pressure increases so since x the area is the same since they're acting on the same area so automatically the pressure which will be exerted instead of being 0 0.02 it will be 0 0.04 so you can see with the if I double the mass or double the thrust applied keeping the area same the pressure also doubles so when air when larger the thrust acting on a given area greater is the pressure exerted on it so accordingly we have got only two ways by which we can increase the pressure if I want to increase the pressure which I am going to apply I have two options one option is to decrease the surface area in contact and second option to increase the thrust so ways to increasing pressure for a given thrust the pressure of a surface increased by reducing the area of surface for example the ends of a nails or pins are made pointed so that the large pressure is exerted at a point ends pointed ends and they can be driven into with a less effort so we always see that the points the we always find that when you don't take any kind of pins you always find the pins they are see they are made taper they are tapered you can see that they are sharp over here why they are sharp over here so that they are going to have a very small surface area so very small surface area gives you more pressure and hence it becomes easier to draw this pen inside the wood or anyway so if i want to draw this pen this inside the eraser i just need to add a small pressure i'll just apply a small pressure a small force and it goes inside very easily but if i try to add it here it won't be possible why because this is the blunt area so the area of cross section is more similarly the cutting tools uh, also have either sharp 
or edges so that uh, even a small thrust may cause a great pressure at the edges and cutting can be done with lesser effort. So yeah, when you are cutting something, the blades and all are always sharpened. So why they are sharpened so that the surface area is very less. So when you are cutting it, without much effort, you are able to cut this. So that's how, why you are making, you are sharpening your knives. The knives are sharpened or the blades are sharpened so that they can cut those things very easily. The next way is to decrease the pressure. For where to decrease, uh, decrease the pressure is for given thrust. The pressure of the surface is reduced by increasing the area of surface. So wide wooden sleepers are placed below the railway track so that the pressure exerted by the iron nails on iron rails on the ground becomes less. You always find that the railway tracks, the railway rails are there, but below the railway tracks there are wooden sleepers. So wooden sleepers, what they do is that when the train is passing by, the wooden sleepers take the complete load of the train because the whole load is getting distributed on the wooden sleepers. Otherwise, what will happen? The rail will sink inside the soil because of the pressure. It will sink inside the soil. So the wooden sleepers are distributing the load. By distributing the load, the pressure decreases and as the pressure decreases, the they are able to sustain the weight of the train. The foundation of the building are made wider than the walls so that the pressure exerted by the building on the ground becomes less. So we always find that if you see any building, the building will always have a wider base. The base will be like, kisi mall wa kera dekh lo. So, upar kita bhi lamba upar, niche ka base jo rahega, bada sa rahega. See the Al-Burj Khalifa. The Al-Burj Khalifa ka bhi aga photograph wa kera bhi dekhwa, it is broader from the base. The base is bigger. And then there is, of course, you can't see the base downwards. So, down jo niche jo, unok ne jo basement bana hai. Not basement, but the foundation bana hai. That will be much, much bigger than this. Which you cannot see, but at least the one you can see also, you always find that the lower part will be broader and then it tapers down. It will never be such that it is lower form, but it is smaller and then it goes upwards. Very uh, awkward design to have this thing because when you have a broader base, automatically the complete pressure of the whole building is going to be distributed along a wider area, and that's why you the force which is exerted gets distributed and the pressure decreases and the building becomes more stable. So this was about the um, pressure and now we move on to the actual part of the chapter and this is pressure in fluids. So pressure in fluids is not the same as pressure in case of solids. In case of solids we saw that the pressure was dependent on the direction of the force applied and the mass of the substance and we are acting only in one direction but in case of fluids the pressure is not going to be in one direction pressure in fluids is different is different because pressure exerted by a fluid is equal in all directions okay let's see this a substance which can flow is called as a fluid so yes first of all thing is when we say fluid it doesn't mean that fluid means only liquids. No, even gases. Any substance which can flow is a fluid. So gases can flow, it's a fluid. Liquid can flow, it's a fluid. So um, any gas or a liquid. So all gases, liquids are thus fluids because they can flow. A solid exerts pressure on the surface due to its weight. Similarly, a fluid also exerts pressure due to its weight. A solid exerts pressure only on the surface on which it is placed, that is at the bottom. But a fluid exerts pressure on the bottom as well as on the walls of the container due to its tendency to flow. A fluid therefore exerts pressure in all directions. See, because the water has a tendency to flow. So like for example, if you take a holy ka jo balloon, what happens? If we look at it, it is pressure on all sides. If we make a hole, in any area, any, any sides also, you will find that the water is oozing up from there. If the pressure would have been only at the bottom, then only a hole at the bottom would give out the water. So if you, but you can see that wherever the hole is, the water is trying to ooze out from there. So that means the pressure is there on all sides. Okay. Because Why is that so? Because they are fluids and fluids has a tendency to flow. So any wall which is coming over there, that wall has a tendency to push the thing towards inside. It is not allowing that thing to go inside. And because it is not allowing to go in, go outside, that is why there is a pressure which is built up over there. 
और प्रेशर कब बिल्ड होता है जब हम लोग फोर्स अप्लाई करते हैं फोर्स क्यों अप्लाई होता है बिकॉज उसको टेंडेंसी है मूव होने का सो वॉटर हैज ए टेंडेंसी टू मूव बट दिस वॉल इट इज नॉट अलाउिंग इट टू मूव एंड बिकॉज इज नॉट अलाउिंग टू मूव सो द फोर्स इज बिंग अप्लाइड अलाउड टू फॉर अलाउिंग इट टू मूव एंड दैट्स वाई द प्रेशर इज एक्टिंग ऑन ऑल द सर्फेस ऑफ वॉटर सो फ्लूड्स the main difference between the pressure in fluids is that the pressure in fluids is exerted in all directions it is not unidirectional it is in all directions so a fluid contained in a vessel exerts pressure at all points and in all directions so fluid is going to exert pressure in at all points all the points so if i've got this particular container and this container if the water is up to this point then there is a pressure over here 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 everywhere all this point even in this points because this is a glass so it's a three dimensional thing so it's a three dimensional thing so everywhere each and every point of the glass there will be pressure exerting on it so fluid contained in a vessel exerts pressure at all points and in all direction so that's what they have taken it as an example so in an example what they have taken is they have taken a container and in the container so this is a container and this container is filled with water up to this point okay now they have made a hole over here and a hole over here it is found that this the water is going to start flowing out like this and here the water is going to flow like this so you can see that water is able to flow not only on this point but also in this point and even even if there is a hole over here there will be flow of water over here so depending upon where the hole is there will be amount of water coming out so you can see that take a vessel filled with water place it horizontal surface make several small holes on the walls of the vessel anywhere below the free surface of the liquid the liquid spurts out through each hole the liquid spurts out from each hole this shows that the liquid exerts pressure at each point on the wall so the, this shows because it is able to go from here also here also here also and on each and every point on the walls of the uh, solid there uh, of, of the container there is pressure exerted by the fluid if you put your finger on any hole of the hole finger feels a thrust due to liquid this demonstrates that the liquid contained in the vessel exerts thrust at all points below the free surface thrust on area, on unit area at a point gives the pressure due to the liquid at that point so if i pre press this thing over here and i stop the flow of water i will feel that there will be some kind of a sensation to me that okay something is trying to push me over there so that particular push is nothing but the pressure exerted by the free surface this much amount of uh, water which is present over there if we know the distance from the bottom of the vessel to the point where the liquid from the uh, hole strikes on the horizontal surface it is noted notice that as the depth of the hole below the free surface of liquid increases the throw of the liquid also increases that is liquid reaches a greater distance on the ground horizontal surface this shows that the liquid pressure at a point increases with the increase of depth of point from its free surface so this is important that not only it is oozing out but you can see that when i drew this this is going further distance and this is going lesser distance so horizontal distance wise you can see of course this will go much further but isko chhod do right now if you see that this is going to go travel much horizontally so this distance will be more whereas this one with the distance is less why because the head that is the distance from the top surface to the point is going to determine that what will be the pressure exerted at that point more the depth more the pressure so liquid pressure is going to depend upon where that particular point is from the free surface of the liquid so free free surface of the liquid se kitna niche hai jitna niche hoga utna pressure zyada hoga now this is also very easily known to you for those people who are swimming so when you swim what happens when you are swimming kya kaam mein pressure aata hai nahi par agar hum log under water jate hain तो जितना हम लोग अंदर जाते जाएं जाते जाएं जाते नीचे जाते जाएंगे उतना कान पे प्रेशर बढ़ने लगता है 
so you can see that as we go deeper and deeper the pressure which is exerted by the liquid on our ears because ears is the most sensitive area where we can feel the pressure easily so you can see that the pressure on the ear increases and that's why kabhi kabhi hota hai ki ball underwater ja ke time pass kiya rahega to kaan kabhi kabhi dukhne lagta hai kyun because the pressure increases got it so you will find that as you go deeper and deeper the pressure is keeping on increasing so now we see about the formula which is going to be used for finding out the pressure in case of fluids but that we'll do it in the next video